Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Cliff, Acting Administrator of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Thank you for joining us as we present NHTSA's Public Service Awards, where we celebrate those who have championed traffic safety in their communities. I'm glad to be with you virtually today, and hopefully next year we can all be together in person in Chicago. Today, we celebrate the public servants who have dedicated their lives to saving others. These winners have strengthened impaired driving prevention programs, improved outreach to tribal communities, enhanced occupant protection, and advanced important traffic safety programs. So please join with us and send your congratulations and appreciation to all of today's winners. And now I would like to turn it over to Chuck DeWeese, chair of the Governor's Highway Safety Association to introduce today's keynote speaker, Chuck. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the NHTSA Public Service Awards. It is my pleasure to introduce today's keynote speaker, the 19th Secretary of the Department of Transportation, Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Prior to joining the Biden-Harris administration, Secretary Buttigieg served two terms as mayor of his hometown of South Bend, Indiana. A graduate of Harvard University and a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, Buttigieg served for seven years as an officer in the US Navy Reserve, taking a leave of absence from the mayor's office for a deployment to Afghanistan in 2014. Growing up in South Bend, which was once home to Studebaker car manufacturing, Pete Buttigieg, like many other Americans in the industrial Midwest, grew up surrounded by empty factories and abandoned houses, sometimes hearing that the only way to a good future was to get out. He returned to the Midwest after school worked in the private sector, and was elected to mayor of South Bend in 2011, with a focus on delivering a new future for the city through a fresh approach to politics and bold ideas. Soon, known as Mayor Pete, Buttigieg worked across the aisle to transform South Bend's future and improve people's everyday lives. Household income grew, poverty fell, and unemployment was cut in half. The city established new resources to extend opportunity and access to technology for all residents. And he launched a Smart Streets initiative to improve street design in the downtown and the historically under-resourced West Side. The complete street strategy led to benefits that included small business growth along previously neglected corridors and hundreds of millions of dollars in new private investment in a once emptying downtown. His leadership helped spark citywide growth and facilitated innovative public-private partnerships like Commuters Trust, a benefits program designed to improve the city's transportation experience for workers. At the same time, Mayor Pete worked to build a South Bend community where every resident could feel safe and included. His initiative on municipal identification cards for residents helped to bring undocumented immigrants out of the shadows. While a small business incubator established in a historically black neighborhood worked to expand opportunity and a surge of investment went into repairing or removing abandoned houses in lower income neighborhoods. In 2019, he launched his historic campaign for president. Throughout 2020, he campaigned for the election of the Biden-Harris ticket and served on the advisory board for the presidential transition. In December, he was nominated by President-elect Biden to be Secretary of Transportation. He was confirmed by the Senate on February 2nd, 2021, becoming the first openly gay person confirmed to serve as Cabinet Secretary. Buttigieg lives with his husband, Chasen, and their rescue dogs, Buddy and Truman. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you to all of the champions of public health and safety in the audience today for joining this 39th annual Lifesavers Conference. I wish that I could be joining you in person, but I'm thankful for the work that you do every day to keep our streets and communities safe. In a moment, we will be honoring the winners of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's Public Service Awards, champions of safety who have worked tirelessly to stop impaired driving, reach out to underserved tribal communities, improve training programs, and protect American lives. I'm so grateful to these award recipients and to each of you for your dedication to our shared mission. As a former mayor, I know firsthand how much your work matters because it's the members of our communities, our advocates, first responders, public health professionals, transportation planners, 
local officials, and more, who understand those communities and their needs best. You see firsthand the challenges that our neighborhoods face, the need for better bike infrastructure and safer pedestrian crossings, and more to mitigate the speed of our vehicles. And you understand all too well the behavioral obstacles to traffic safety, including drivers impaired by drugs or alcohol, speeding, distracted driving, and a lack of seatbelt usage. We all know the numbers. More than 35,000 Americans die in traffic fatalities every year. And human behavior contributes to 94% of serious crashes. We also know that people of color and low-income Americans are among the hardest hit. The fatality rate for black pedestrians is twice that of white pedestrians. For Native Americans, it's five times higher. This is unacceptable. As the Secretary of Transportation, I am committed to safe roads for everyone. And across the department, safety is our top priority. That's not a slogan, it is our driving mission, and it motivates our work every single day. That's why NHTSA is working with state and local agencies, law enforcement, safety stakeholders, and others to address impaired and distracted driving, speeding, and seatbelt usage. And because equity is an essential part of safety, we're also paying special attention to how we can work with law enforcement agencies and the awareness campaigns surrounding those efforts. We're asking participating law enforcement agencies to take a good look at equity, because we need not only to protect the public, but to do it in a fair and equitable way. We're also looking at the role that new technology can play in reducing injuries and fatalities, because we know that newer, more energy efficient vehicles are also often equipped with better safety features, which gives us the potential to meet our safety goals and our climate goals at the same time. Of course, vehicle safety is just one part of how we build a safer, cleaner, more equitable future. It's going to take a multi-pronged approach, including biking, walking, and public transit. Every day, millions of Americans rely on each of these options to get to work, to visit family, to keep our economy running. And with your help, we're going to build a future that works for all of them, one that's safer, cleaner, and more equitable. The Biden-Harris administration has shown us a clear path to that future, the American Jobs Plan. The president's plan provides over $600 billion to improve our transportation infrastructure and make it safer and more resilient. That includes modernizing 20,000 miles of roads and highways, fixing the 10 most economically significant bridges in the country that need reconstruction, and repairing another 10,000 smaller bridges, including many that connect to rural and tribal communities. It includes $85 billion to expand and modernize our transit systems, and it doubles funding for public transit. Because the people who rely on public transit the most, disproportionately people of color, deserve affordable ways to get to where they need to be quickly and safely. The American Jobs Plan invests over $170 billion in electric vehicles so that more Americans can get good paying jobs building better, safer, modern cars. To support those vehicles, it also provides funding for a national network of half a million new charging stations by the end of the decade. And of course, it invests $20 billion directly into improving road safety, including a new Safe Streets for All program that would fund local and state efforts to reduce crashes and fatalities so that whether you drive, walk, bike, or roll, you should be safe getting to where you need to go. The American Jobs Plan is the most ambitious investment in jobs since World War II in this country, and it gives us an opportunity to improve public safety for generations to come. We're not just going to repave roads and repeat the status quo. We're going to build back better smarter and safer than before. This is our chance to redefine what we expect from the roads we rely on every day, to ensure that they are healthy enough to support everyone safely everywhere. Our roads and streets aren't just ways to get around. They're part of how we connect, how people can connect to jobs, to loved ones, and to each other. So let me again congratulate today's award recipients for your service to our nation. And I look forward to working with all of you to build a safer, cleaner, more equitable future for this country together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. It is an honor serving with you in the Biden-Harris administration and working together to make our roads safer for everyone. In my short time here, I've seen firsthand how dedicated NHTSA's 600 plus employees are to the agency's mission, saving lives 
and reducing crashes on our nation's roads. Everything we do is focused on achieving this mission while making transportation more environmentally responsible and more equitable. I want to assure you of my deep and abiding commitment to NHTSA's safety mission. Nothing is more important than saving lives. I am honored to partner with all of you in safety, in reducing fatalities, in preventing crashes, and ensuring that our roads are safe for everyone inside or outside a vehicle. I've already met many dedicated traffic safety professionals like you in my first few months and enjoyed our discussions on the issues most important to you. For those of you I haven't met, I look forward to doing so in the near future. NHTSA's relationships with safety partners like you are critical to advancing our shared safety mission and strengthening those relationships and finding new ways to work together. This administration believes, as do I, in the safe systems approach. Everyone, including those who design, build, operate, and use the road system, share in the responsibility for road safety. And we need to ensure that our transportation systems are safe for everyone. NHTSA will fully integrate the needs of all road users, not just drivers and passengers, but pedestrians, cyclists, children, older Americans, and people with disabilities as we move forward over the next four years. These efforts to improve safety are even more important right now as we are facing a unique crisis on our nation's roads caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. We have seen very concerning increase in risky driving behaviors, such as not wearing a seatbelt, speeding, or driving after using drugs or alcohol. NHTSA continues to work with stakeholders to address these troubling trends, and we invite you to the table as well. I know many Lifesavers panels are addressing these risky driving behaviors, and I hope you come away from them with new strategies and best practices to use in your communities. It's an exciting time in transportation safety. The decisions we make today can change the way we live, work, and travel. Together, we can make our streets, cities, and neighborhoods safer for everyone. And I look forward to meeting you all in the coming months and learning more about your life-saving work. And now it's time to celebrate the winners of our annual public service awards. Congratulations to each and every winner. Thank you for your commitment to saving lives and to serving your communities. And thank you to all of you watching from home or office and joining us to honor these very deserving recipients. And now here is Car NHTSA's Carolyn Cash to introduce our award winners. Carolyn. Judge J. Matthew Martin serves as the American Bar Association Tribal Court Fellow. In this role, Judge Martin is responsible for providing educational opportunities for tribal court judges, leading to more effective adjudication of impaired driving cases. Judge Martin leads the effort to create curriculum that educates tribal court judges across the Indian nations on topics such as sentencing tools and alternatives, healing to wellness courts, and self-represented litigants, leading to improved judicial efforts to reduce deaths and injuries from impaired driving crashes as motor vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death for American Indian Alaska Natives ages 1 through 44. His work this year alone has included outreach and partnerships with the National Judicial College Tribal Judicial Center, the NHTSA Tribal Working Group, the National Native American Bar Association, and the National American Indian Court Judges Association. Jared Moore, Tabitha Harris, and Jody Dennison make up the Tribal Injury Prevention Resource Center. In 2020, TIPROC led a Tribal Safety Summit that engaged Native American leaders and highway safety professionals, ranging from congressional representatives to tribal law enforcement officers and injury prevention coordinators. This summit resulted in safety, legislative, and policy action as well as education and training for tribal members who carry out programs in their communities. We also shine a light on an innovation unique to TIPROC, the Motor Vehicle Safety Digital Storytelling Workshop. These moving first-person narratives promote change and include native language, culture, and traditions to illustrate the importance of community traffic safety. The center is a recognized safety leader who demonstrates that their heart and mission are about the safety of Native Americans of all ages, on the roads, and in their communities. 
Captain William R. Haynes has passionately committed himself to highway safety in New Hampshire as both a trooper and in 2018 as the commander of the New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety. Through his leadership, the culture of motor vehicle occupant protection in New Hampshire changed dramatically. With the backdrop of New Hampshire being the only state without an adult belt law, combined with the state motto of live free or die, the importance of his dedication to occupant protection cannot be overstated. It is believed that the renewed focus on occupant protection has contributed to a 30% reduction in overall New Hampshire fatalities in recent years. On March 1, 2021, Captain Hayes retired. He remains highly respected by many peers, co-workers, highway safety leaders, and partners throughout the state and the country. He embodies the meaning of what it is to be a lifesaver through his lifelong dedication to saving lives on New Hampshire roads. Stacy Manware, Deputy Director of Connecticut Superior Court Operations, is an outstanding leader and pioneer in the field of online adjudication. Online adjudication allows citizens to participate electronically with the justice system upon receiving a traffic citation, substantially increasing justice system accessibility and transparency while leading to equitable and meaningful dispositions. Ms. Manware implemented this system statewide making Connecticut the first state to have an end-to-end -end paperless process from citation to disposition. Recognizing that adjudication is one of the least developed data systems, she undertook a grassroots information campaign producing presentations across the country demonstrating the program's virtues. Her efforts resulted in direct technical assistance implementation requests from seven states and counting. Ms. Manware's advocacy is mobilizing other states to explore and implement their own online adjudication program using Connecticut's model as a best practice. Officer Frank Enko is a 33-year veteran of the Baltimore County Police Department. Throughout his entire career, he has been a true traffic safety champion. He is currently assigned to the department's traffic training team, a one-of-a-kind entity in Maryland. The team is a highly specialized training unit for officers who want to focus on advanced traffic-related topics. As DRE coordinator, Officer Anko expanded the DRE program that now includes 21 certified DREs, has an on-call procedure so that a DRE is always available in Baltimore County, and he partnered with the Narcotics Unit to develop safety protocols when encountering suspected opioids. This innovative approach has saved many lives. During his tenure as a drug recognition expert, he is credited for training more than 20,000 officers. Officer Enko is dedicated to saving lives and preventing injuries. He is a consummate leader and has worked hard to teach other law enforcement officers what they need to know to become leaders in traffic safety themselves. Robert F. Dallas served as the governor's representative in Georgia's Office of Highway Safety from 2003 until 2011. During his tenure, Georgia's highway safety program rose to prominence with passage of progressive traffic safety laws along with innovative public education, law enforcement, and paid media programs. Mr. Dallas has continued his dedicated work to address motor vehicle deaths as a strong and highly visible community advocate for highway safety. Recent legislative efforts include upgrading the hands-free law, establishing enhanced penalties for vulnerable road users, implementing automated speed enforcement in school zones, and revisions to the implied consent law in response to a Georgia Supreme Court case. Mr. Dallas's achievements have resulted in impactful changes that have greatly improved the traffic safety picture in Georgia. And for that, we are very grateful. As a 29-year police officer with the Buffalo Grove Police Department, Scott Christensen has dedicated his life to traffic safety. As a law enforcement officer, he was one of the top DUI officers in Illinois, consistently making over 100 arrests each year. His accomplishments in impaired driving enforcement and traffic safety go far beyond making DUI arrests. They include DUI education efforts with youth and working closely with DUI victims and their families. Mr. Christensen is the LEL supervisor 
overseeing five LELs who cover nearly 1,000 law enforcement agencies. One of his major successes was designing and implementing a data-driven law enforcement agency recruitment plan to maximize the number of agencies participating in Illinois' highway safety program. The Illinois Sustained Traffic Enforcement Program saw a 30% increase in participation from 2019 to 2020. And for 2021, the enforcement grantee retention rate is 88%, a direct result of his well-orchestrated recruitment effort. In 1985, Safer New Mexico Now was founded by Doc and Lena Weiler after their son Jeff was killed in an unbelted automobile crash. Ann Rhodes continues the family leadership with the assistance of Lisa Kelloff and a small team. Known for leveraging strategic alliances, the organization brings together diverse groups dating back decades to when they championed the first child safety seat laws in the state. These partnerships have evolved to include first responder agencies, the public health community, universities and schools statewide, safety advocacy groups, and key state and federal partners, including the Federal Bureau of Indian Affairs. Safer New Mexico Now is a recognized safety leader that champions safety laws, delivers education and training to citizens and traffic safety professionals, and provides child safety and booster seats to families in need. They reach rural and tribal communities and remain laser focused on keeping kids safe, both inside and outside of cars. For nearly 40 years, Karen Whitman has been a champion of traffic safety. As Deputy District Attorney for Wyandotte County, Kansas, Karen has made herself available to law enforcement 24 hours a day, ready to execute a search warrant in a suspected impaired driving stop or to travel to a crash scene to assist in the collection of evidence needed to charge a crime. Karen's passion for reducing impaired driving goes beyond efforts to serve the innocent victims of this senseless crime. She is also a strong promoter of reducing recidivism by advocating for treatment that has led to life-saving changes in offender behavior. Karen also served as the first traffic safety resource prosecutor in Kansas, training thousands of law enforcement officers and prosecuting attorneys in all facets of evidence-based traffic enforcement and prosecution. Karen's passion stems from a long understanding that traffic safety affects everyone in a community. Her comprehensive approach has been invaluable in creating safer roads across Kansas. In one moment, Nancy Sharon Brock's life was forever altered when her son Eric and his girlfriend Angie were killed by a 21-year-old drunk driver whose blood alcohol content was nearly twice the legal limit. Nancy recognized the need for awareness as a means of prevention in South Dakota. Her message blossomed into the organization from the heart heart meaning, to help eliminate alcohol-related tragedies. Nancy developed a partnership with the South Dakota Department of Public Safety to reach drivers. At driver's license exam stations across the state, an educational video discusses the importance of not drinking and driving, where Nancy tells the story of Eric and Angie. Her personal account resonates with youth. Nancy's dedication to impaired driving prevention through thousands of volunteer hours has reached every corner of South Dakota and surrounding states. Her notable outreach efforts have made a generational impact with young drivers in the region. Following the onset and spread of COVID-19 in early 2020, California lost over 400 drug recognition experts due to the inability for law enforcement to complete training and recertification requirements. Continued spreading of the disease warranted exceptional measures to be taken to ensure the DRE program did not collapse. During the summer, Sergeant Glenn Glazer Jr. oversaw a team that delivered 42 recertification classes in 65 days, recertifying over 270 DREs in the process. This was a result of great personal sacrifice and risk undertaken by Sergeant Glazier and his team, since their work took place amidst a dangerous pandemic, civil unrest, and massive wildfires in California. Sergeant Glazier's foresight, dedication, and leadership prevented the California DRE program from collapsing and resulted in the ability of hundreds of specially trained officers to be able to detect and remove drug-impaired drivers from California's highways. 
Corporal Kyle Wills, leader of the Idaho Regional Law Enforcement Liaison Program, started a traffic engagement program in which Boise traffic officers hand out chocolate bars as a message of goodwill and safety to area residents. Corporal Wills' initiative has created positive interaction with people while passing on educational safety messages about the importance of wearing a seatbelt, slowing down, and driving engaged, not distracted. This past year, his initiative garnered both national and international attention, with stories in the Washington Post, on CNN and NBC, and articles in newspapers in England and Israel. Also during 2020, Corporal Wills has instructed officers on how to use social media for traffic safety community outreach, including his Traffic Tip Tuesday and Watch Out Wednesday initiatives, and his work to advance the Idaho Office of Highway Safety's public message campaign, Shift Idaho. Corporal Wills has demonstrated exemplary leadership, helping to distinguish the Boise Police Department as a state and national leader in traffic safety. For the past 39 years, Patrick J. Hoy has been passionate about improving traffic safety in Iowa. Pat served as an Iowa State Trooper for 14 years prior to being promoted to the rank of Sergeant, District Commander, Captain, and ultimately Colonel of the Iowa State Patrol. His tenure as a road trooper helped him formulate the strategic goals he set while leading the State Patrol and when he was assigned as Bureau Chief with the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau. Pat's leadership has helped guide not only the staff within the State Highway Safety Office, but he extends his ideas, support, and overall passion for traffic safety to other stakeholders across Iowa. Recognizing the perils of impaired driving and its impact on the safety of the traveling public, Pat organized the Iowa Impaired Driving Coalition, a partnership of multidisciplinary stakeholders that created an Iowa Strategic Impaired Driving Plan to address upward fluctuations in crashes caused by alcohol or other drugs. Patrick clearly understands the value of strong partnerships. He has been instrumental in helping to strengthen relationships with all Iowa traffic safety professionals while continuing to build upon his well-known law enforcement experience. He has a special knack for using his jovial personality to provide examples, suggestions, and personal experiences to apply to productive, efficient, and effective strategies. Pat's achievements throughout his career have had a vast positive impact on traffic safety for the citizens of Iowa and beyond. Carolyn, thank you. And to all of our winners, congratulations again. Before we go, let's recognize our 2020 NHTSA Public Service Award winners as well. We weren't able to celebrate them at a ceremony last year, but we wanna honor their achievements today. For a full list of our 2020 winners, please click on the awards page on the Lifesaver site. With that, we conclude today's ceremony. Congratulations again to all of our winners and thank you for attending and for your work to help us save lives. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.